2 Samuel chapter 26. We're going to pick up in the middle of the chapter, but let me set the stage for what is going on. By the time you get to 2 Samuel chapter number 6, Saul the king has died. David had been anointed king over Judah, and one of Saul's sons is king over the remaining tribes of Israel. We find in chapter number 5 the kingdom is united. And one of David's first acts as the king of the united kingdom of Israel, he desires to bring the ark of God to the newly appointed capital of Israel, Jerusalem. And so he sends down and he goes to bring the ark up. He brings the ark up, he does the right thing, but he does it in a wrong way. He didn't do it the way that God instructed for the ark to be carried. He had a new cart built, and he put it on a cart, and was driving it to Jerusalem. You see, that's what the Philistines did when they took it away. They put it on a cart. Yet that's not how the ark was to be transported. We find that they must have hit a bump. The ark, the cart shook, and the ark shook a little bit. One of the fellows following behind it, put his hand on it, and he died. You see, there are some things that are not meant for us to put our hands on. So David was a little bit upset. I don't know if he's upset at God or he's upset at the guy who touched the ark or upset that it didn't work out. But he put the ark in a fellow's house by the name of Obed-Edom. And the ark sits there for three months. We'll pick up our reading, verse number 12. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom, and all that pertaineth unto him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom, into the city of David with gladness. And it was so when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael... Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord and she despised him in her heart and they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord let's pray Father we bless you we thank you for the good choir singing we thank you, Lord, for the good special singing. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for a good report of our two good jail services this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the good testimony. And, Lord, thank you for the goodness of God. Now, Father, bless the reading of the Word of God. Help illuminate our minds to truth. Challenge our hearts. Uh, Lord, do a work in our lives. Uh, God, we pray the saints of God would be revived. Uh, we pray if there be any amongst us today, unsaved, lost without Christ, that today will be the day of their salvation. Uh, move throughout the service. Uh, get glory to your name. Father, will not fail to bless you and praise you for all that you do. Uh, Lord, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Uh, bless now, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. I want to look at a few things from this text and get to the thought this morning. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the prophet or the blessing in verse number 12. Uh, and it was told King David, saying, The, the Lord hath blessed uh, the house of Obed-Edom uh, and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. Uh, 
Can I say, wherever the presence of God is, there'll be blessing. Uh, what a blessing to have his presence. What a blessing that he took up his abode in earthen vessels. Uh, and fed regardless of your circumstances uh, or what's going on in the world, uh, you can encourage yourself in the Lord. Uh, and as you follow him and trust him, you'll find the blessings of God in your life and all that pertaineth unto you. We find the prophet. Can I say we never lose as Christians? Mm. We just gain in the Lord and gain and gain some more. We see the profit, but notice the price, if you will. Look at verse number 13. And it was so when they bare the ark of the Lord, had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. Now can I say I said early on that they uh, mistakenly put the ark on a cart, and that wasn't the way it was to be carried. It was to be carried on the shoulders of people by staves that went through golden rings uh, on the side of the ark and it was to be borne or carried uh, uh, from whence uh, it was to be taken. Uh, but notice the price here. We find that they that bear the ark of the Lord when they went six paces that David sacrificed oxen and fatlings. Uh, uh, my hillbilly Matt tells me that a pace was about five feet. So every uh, six paces, every 30 feet, they'd stop and they'd offer up uh, a sacrifice. Uh, can I say that it was five miles from Gibeah to Jerusalem? Uh, and uh, if that's the case, then uh, David offered some 1,760 sacrifices per mile. That comes up to 8,800 sacrifices uh, from the time that they started bearing the ark uh, until they got to Jerusalem. Uh, now listen, uh, a lot of Baptists don't like this text because it says David danced before the Lord. Uh, but I want to help you with something. Uh, if you stopped uh, on your way to church this morning uh, every 30 feet uh, and offered up sacrifice of praise unto God, uh, by the time you got here this morning, uh, you'd have been leaping and praising too. You'd have been worshiping before you got here uh, when you realized the goodness of God uh, and who He is, uh, who we are. Uh, we don't deserve Him. Uh, he ought to throw us off into hell for things we've thought and said even this week. Uh, but we serve a God who loved us, uh, who gave Himself for us, uh, who saved us, uh, who sealed us unto the day of redemption, uh, who made a way uh, for us to go to glory. Uh, where we'll dwell with him forevermore. Uh, who are you and I, the old Gentile dogs, we even get to come to the house of God uh, and worship him today? Uh, hey, uh, but a price has to be paid. Uh, the reason some never worship, uh, you never pay a price. Uh, but if you never learn uh, just to worship him before you get here, worship will break out on you once you're here. Uh, we see a price. We see a prophet. I didn't even factor out how many times they went to the altar and them 8,800 sacrifices. Some of them pieces were put in two. Some of them were put in four. Some of them in eights. You factor out every time they went to the altar well, over them pieces. Lord have mercy. You, you start going to the altar that much. See if worship don't break out on you. huh? Well, I can't get hung up there. huh? Notice, if you will, the passion. Verses 14 and 15, And David danced before the Lord with all his might. Didn't do it halfway. Uh, mm, give me some folks that just serve God with all their might. And David was girded with the linen ephod, so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of, a, of the trumpet. Uh, it cracks me up how folks get nervous when people get loud in church. Uh Say, why you got to shout? Why you got to get so excited? Well, if you was where I was when Jesus saved me and changed me, you, you might get a little excited too. Huh? We find his passion. Notice, if you will, though, the pundit. Look at verse 16. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing for the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Can I say, when you worship, when you serve God, you live for God, there's always going to be critics. She lived in his own house. She's married to him. She despised him. 
By the way, God rewarded her. She never had him any children. Mm. Can I say, you're always going to have somebody that criticizes, somebody that's always against you, somebody always thinks they know how to do it better or do it, do it a different way. Hey, just serve the Lord, huh? Notice the place in verse 17. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in, what's that word? His place. Hmm? Whose place? The Lord's place. Hmm? In the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. We see the place where it was supposed to be. Hmm? Can I say the Lord's always got a place? He's got a place of salvation where you met him. Huh? Huh? He's got a place for you to worship him. He's got a place called a prayer closet where he'll do business with you. The Lord's got a place, an altar where things die. He's got some places for you even today. But then notice the picture. We'll get to the message. You see, the ark is always a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the Ark of the Covenant, it had three things inside it. It had the, ta uh, the, the tables of stone that God pinned out with His own finger, the Ten Commandments. It had a pot of manna that God had rained down from heaven. And it also had the rod that budded to show that Aaron's, uh, uh, provi uh, his uh, uh, generations would be the priesthood the Levitical priesthood of Israel and the high priest would always come from the lineage of Aaron uh, can I say those all picture the Lord Jesus Christ in him dwelt the law of God perfectly the priesthood of God fully uh, and the bread of God abundantly uh, we find the ark's a picture of the Lord uh, the shittim wood that it was made of showed Jesus' humanity uh, but then it was overlaid with gold which shows his righteousness uh, uh, it had a mercy seat that sat upon it uh, which was the place of atonement uh, and friends uh, our atonement's in the Lord Jesus Christ he is our propitiation uh, he is our mercy seat uh, the mercy seat had two cherubim uh, over top of them uh, uh, which showed uh, uh, God's presence uh, but his unapproachability uh, outside of Christ we cannot approach God uh, but through Christ he's our mediator uh, he's our intercessor uh, he is our avenue to the Father uh, can I say uh, I mentioned that on the sides of the ark had golden rings uh, 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 and those golden rings pictured the Holy Spirit of God uh, and they bore it with a wooden staff a long wooden rod would go through those rings uh, 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 and that wooden staff uh, represents believers in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, we're made of wood natural things humanity uh, but we're attached to the ark the Lord Jesus uh, through the rings through the Holy Spirit of God uh, and we see the ark uh, represents Christ in our relationship with him uh, with all that said I want to preach on this thought this morning I want to preach on those guys in verse 13, that bear the ark of the Lord. And I want to preach on it. It takes someone under a burden to bring the ark back. It takes someone under a burden to bring the ark back. Can I say, uh, Webster defines a burden as this. That which is carried or born, a load. That which is born with labor or difficulty. That which is grievous, wearisome, or oppressive to encumber with weight or heavy load. Uh, uh, listen, uh, if we have a, a chill supper, uh, we have dinner on the ground. People sign up for miles to come to that. Uh, you'll find folks, they won't come out for anything, but they'll come out when there's food available, I promise you. Uh, but you know what line there's never anybody in? Uh, that line uh, for somebody to carry a burden. Uh, uh, that line uh, where somebody's going to have to be weighted down. Uh, where somebody's going to have to be loaded down. Uh, something that's wearisome. Uh, something that's grievous. Uh, uh, something uh, uh, that's a 
oppressive. Uh, hey, we have men in here that have pastored churches. Uh, you talk to them. Uh, every young preacher wants to be the pastor. Uh, they want to stand up and chew people out and get paid for it. Uh, they want folks to love them on the way out and pat them on the back. Uh, tell them how wonderful everything is. Uh, but what young preachers never see, Brother Adrian, uh, Brother Doug, uh, Brother Ron, uh, is those heavy loads we carry in the midnight hour. Uh, those hours we miss sleeping uh, cause we're praying over a family we're starting to see drift uh, uh, we're praying over a family that's broken hearted got a wayward uh, a child uh, uh, because we're spending time with God trying to get the mind of God uh, to have a message for God's people uh, they never see the load uh, they never see the burden uh, they never see the heaviness uh, they just see the glory uh, I've said it a million times. I'll say it a million times again. Uh, uh, the easiest thing I ever get to do as a pastor uh, is to stand and preach the Word of God. Uh, but from the final amen tonight uh, till Wednesday night, uh, I'll carry a heavy load uh, trying to get the mind of God uh, and trying to be uh, uh, the shepherd of the flock. Uh, I've got news uh, we'll never have revival we'll never see a move of God we'll never see sinners get saved until folks get under a burden get under a load to bring the ark back to bring the presence and the power of God back them youngins getting up singing about the goodness of God we should have kicked the walls out of this place but cause you saw a few snowflakes you come in blah you also came in without a burden. Amen. I said it's going to take a burden to bring the ark back. Amen. And I say we need someone with a burden to see sinners saved. Yeah. Mm. God help us to weep over sinners again. God help us to get broken over sinners again where we're willing to give somebody a track. We're willing to give somebody an invite to church. Uh, we're willing to tell somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't tell anybody because we don't have a burden for anybody. Uh, you reap what you sow. You win somebody else's loved one to God. Somebody might win one of your loved ones to God. Uh, we need someone with a burden for sinners to be saved. We need somebody with a burden for the Savior to be pleased. Uh I want his favor. I want his hand on the church. I want him blessing abundantly. We got a couple meetings coming up. I want to tell you, as of right now, this uh, 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 Sunday in January, we're not ready for meeting. We need somebody to get a burden for the Savior to be pleased to breathe on this place once again. Huh? And I'll say this we need somebody with a burden. For squanderers to be recovered. What's a squanderer? A prodigal. Somebody's taking the goodness of God and wasting and right as living. Can I say there's a lot of people out there that used to sit in the church house. They're not in the church house today. Why don't somebody get a burden for them? Start praying for them. Maybe go knock on the door. Maybe give them a phone call or text. Uh, invite them back to the house of God. Uh, they may be sitting there thinking nobody cares about them. Well, I'm thankful for them. There's been times in my life when I've been that way. Somebody called me. Let me know the care. Uh, we need somebody get a burden to do that. Thought about this. We need someone with a burden for the saints to burn. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about the saints of God burning with the glory of God again. Uh, give us those saints of God that don't have to wear a neon sign let everybody know they're a Christian. People who see the glory of God on them know they're a Christian. They're burning with the glory of God. Moses, when he come down on the mount, his face shone. You know, somebody get a, get a burden for the saints to burn with glory. How about with gladness? Look at verse number 12. The Bible says, uh, And when it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Eden, all that pertained to him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Eden into the city of David with gladness. Mm. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, I was excited to come to church today. Right. Some of you look like it's a chore. Yeah. Uh, God help us 
to get a burden for the saints to burn with glory, with gladness, and with goodness. Uh, thank God for people of God that are good to other people. Uh, we're living in a day and age when uh, uh, things are going crazy out in this world and things are a mess. And you know what people need? They need to see the goodness of God in God's people again. Mm -hmm. We need somebody with a burden. Sinners to be saved, the Savior to be pleased, squanders to be recovered, the saints to burn. But how about the sanctuary to shine? Hmm? A city that sits on a hill cannot be hid. All of Florence, when they're driving down 237 in a 45 mile an hour speed limit and they're doing 60, ought to look over to this hillside and say, there's something about that place right there. Uh, they ought to drive by and sense the presence of God. They ought to see this place as a lighthouse on life's troubled seas. Uh, you know, I say we need somebody with a burden for Satan to be exposed. That sorry, no good devil's lying to people. And people believing it hook, line, and sinker. The Bible says, it says if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that's lost. Who's hiding it from them? The devil. Uh, I guess there's some football games today, and everybody's excited about that. I guess in a couple of weeks there'll be a Super Bowl, and people will be excited about it. You know there are people who live all year just to have a Super Bowl party. How terrible of a life you got when that's your life. Uh, but you know what? The devil's made their lives so full of misery, that's all they've got to live for. Somebody needs to get a burden that Satan gets exposed, that the backside of the billboard's revealed, and they realize there's no hope in any of that stuff. But hope can be found in Jesus. Let me give you this, I'll be done. How does one get a burden? We can preach till the cows come home that we need a burden, but how does one get a burden? If I just tell you you need one and don't tell you how to get one, I'm not much of a preacher, am I? So how do you get a burden? Well, I find it in this text. First of all, can I say that David heard. Look what it says in verse 12. And it was told King David. He heard. Today you're hearing we need a burden. You never know a need till somebody reveals it to you where there's a need for folks to have a burden. So I'm waiting for a sign from heaven. I got better than that. You're hearing it from God's man and from the Word of God. You don't need a sign. You got the Scriptures. And it was told David what was happening down there at Obed-Eden. And I say he heard. How does one get a burden, preacher? You got to hurt here. Not only did he hear, David heard, but he heeded. Look what it says, verse 12. It was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom, and all that pertaineth unto him, because of the ark of God. So David went. David didn't wait for a proclamation from God. He didn't wait for the heavens to open, and God to thunder down with a voice of many waters. He didn't wait for a trumpet to sound. Uh, he didn't wait uh, uh, till everything in his schedule lined up. Uh, he heard what was happening uh, and he went. Uh, uh, how do you get a burden? You hear the need uh, and you go. You heed to the burden. Uh, you get up under the load of that thing and you just start carrying it. Uh, uh, you say sinners need to be saved. I can't do much uh, but I can give a track. Uh, hey you hear folks out of church. I can't do much but I can send a text. Uh, hey, you hear? Uh, uh, somebody needs to please the Lord. I can't do much, but I can pray and pray till Jesus is pleased. Uh, hey, uh, I'm just telling you, uh, you've heard there's a need. Uh, now you need to heed the need uh, and put feet on it uh, and see what God does as a result of it. Uh, David heard. He heeded. And then he hauled it. Look what happened in verse number 12. So David went and brought up the ark of God. He heard, he heeded, and he hauled it back to Jerusalem. Hmm. You want the blessings of God? 
You've heard. You need a burden. You need to heed. Start doing it. And with whatever God puts on your heart, just haul it. Say, preacher, I've been praying and praying. Nothing's happening. Keep hauling it. Amen. Keep praying until Jesus answers. Uh, keep being faithful, carrying your burden. Just keep on keeping on. Say, preacher, nothing happened today. Praise the Lord. If he don't come back, there'll be tomorrow. Mm -mm. Somebody's got to do the work. Listen, the man of God can't do it all. Somebody has to get a burden. Have you heard? We need a burden. Get the ark back. Are you willing to heed? Are you willing to go get the ark? Are you willing to haul it? Till you get it back where it needs to go? By the way, hauling this heavy load didn't seem to be a heavy load. It seemed like the more days around it, the more rejoicing they did. Some got, times God will put a burden in our life to bring joy back to our life to bring rejoicing to bring thanksgiving to bring a, a sense of humility in our lives uh, takes someone getting a burden to bring the ark back will you heed what you've heard and will you be willing to haul it till you get it to his place when you get it to his place friend then God takes over and he does the work. This morning, the charge is for somebody to get a burden. Let's all stand. Some are already praying. Brother Clint, come get a song. While he's getting a song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Message been simple, Lord. We just need to get a burden again. Give us a burden for sinners. Give us a burden for prodigals. Give us a burden for the fellow saints of God. Give us a burden for the sanctuary of God. Give us a burden to please the Lord. God, we've heard the need. Lord, help this message not to fall on deaf ears. Help us to leave it here, but help us to heed it. And then help us to haul a burden until you take over. Now, God, bless these in the altar. I don't know what they're praying for or praying about, but you do. God, meet every need. Now, God, I know it wasn't a salvation message. But God, if there's somebody here lost today without God, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God speak to their heart. I pray they'd come. Let's take a Bible and show them how to be saved. They can be saved today. God, maybe there's somebody here today saved, but, Lord, they're just in a far country. God, I pray today they'd come home. God, maybe it's something else you're dealing with somebody on. Lord, help them to heed the voice of God and therefore receive the blessings of God. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.